So, uh, which brings me into my number one, and um, one of one of the one of the first things that I I read um, was Crisis on Infinite Earths, and the second thing that I read was was it was a book by Mark Greenwald, which was called Squadron Supreme, and Squadron Supreme is is kind of set up like a I guess what would you say a Justice League in in, a, in an L yeah they're situation that's they what Josh created. told me to read too by the way yeah yes it's it's, it's his go to and that's okay um I'm I, yeah it's one of my top three or four books ever mm-hmm. yeah and one of one of their their big hype characters is his name is Hyperion and uh, Hyperion is 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 a one of the founding members of squadron who would you match him up to be like or a oh, hyperion uh-huh yeah he's a superman analog yeah so. yeah so he is just he's just visually he's really cool um but here's again where we get into a little bit of trouble and i think it's it's marvel's <laughs> it's marvel's fault a little bit is is they've kind of um, watered him down over the years. They've given him, hey, he's on this earth and he's like this, and he's on this earth and he's like this. But he's he's just overall a really cool character. Um, um, I think. Yeah, it's been very convoluted. If I could just add to that, the Squadron mm-hmm. Supreme, amazing characters, but we won't go into it. There's been so many multiverse variations of them that it's become quite muddled uh over the years uh i still think uh, along with ref that this version of hyperion and and this version of the squadron is the best but go ahead it would it would be the best because again i think he is he is just mainly that he's just that powerful um again i i think it's it just shows to greenwell's writing that he is just very likable um I'm not going to do many uh, spoilers, but him his relationship with Nighthawk on the on the the team was was pretty special, and it, it, it just mirrored a lot of you know the Justice League's um, Batman Superman type relationship. And Nighthawk was <laughs> was made pretty unlikable at times. Uh, yeah, he was the. He was the Batman who, yeah, you know, Batman wasn't very likable at times either. He came off as an a-hole quite a bit, and, and they did that successfully with with that squadron's version of Nighthawk, for sure. 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 So one question I want each time we're doing this, if you feel Hyperion's going to make it on the big screen, now tell me a scenario of how that would happen. Like, you said um, Justice League Dark for the other one. So what what do you feel this one oh. would go? I think Hyperion could, could you know, um, if if they're opening up the the multiverse in any way, um, if if we're seeing any Elseworlds type stuff, I, I I really think he would. I think the Squadron and him himself could make a really good uh, Disney Plus show. Um, and the reason I say that is is because they're. Um, their story is is pretty unique. Um, I think Ace can can speak to the idea that the the what was it twelve issues? Well, how how long was the squadron? Greenwald's. Yeah, it's twelve issues. Yeah, it was yeah. really long. It, that twelve issues though was 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 a pretty defining <laughs> um, thing where they they battled you know this. And, and they were brainwashed in in in, in different ways. And- Tons of ethical questions were brought up about what you would do as all powerful beings. Would you let humans do what they need to do, or would you take control because you think you know what's best and you're only trying to do what's best for humanity? And all kinds of great ethical questions. That's why that story still resonates today, in my opinion. So do you? Okay, and then the last question I would have for you. Do you actually see this happening eventually? Oh, for sure. I think again. I think it would. I, th- 
I think they're getting to the point where they're going to start running out of unique characters. And I think even though that high, the Squadron Supreme is is very similar to the Justice League, they're also very unique too because they're they have a pretty big. Um, they have a lot of different members in the Squadron Supreme, and I think that they could they can make themselves so unique. And I think Hyperion um, again is as familiar as he he may be with concern to being like Superman. I think he's unique all in itself too. I got a really good I got a theory about where they're gonna appear. Now, and I'm basing it off of heavy rumor. The heavy rumor is that they're going to make an appearance in Loki. You know, Mm -hmm. Loki's traveling worlds and time. Now, that's a rumor from some really good sources, but they can't confirm it. Uh, But here's what I think. And and real quick, on in the Squadron Supreme story, it's piggybacking off of a storyline in the Defenders. Mm -hmm. And their world's been, like, kind of really messed up partially destroyed and that's why the squadron takes these extreme member measures to get things back on track i i think it would be really super cool if they spun out of loki you know they're in an episode let's say and like ref says they become a disney plus show Mm -hmm. and they'd be crazy not to just adapt the grunwald storyline in a disney plus series and the reason, and you think to yourself, well, they're not going to freaking do a Justice League ripoff character. I disagree because Feige loves to one up Marvel and fast and fast. And how he's like, hey, guys, you know, you guys can't flip and do a Justice League movie. And the one you you put out finally, that's actually good. You want to disown and not <laughs> and not continue. Putting the I'm gonna do a Disney Plus. I'm gonna do a Disney Plus version of Justice League, and it's gonna blow what you did out of the water. I'm gonna do it better. So I think there's a real good opportunity, and I hope I think he would do that. That's crazy. Well, and I mean, as much as I, as much as I love the Squadron Supreme, they they had a couple characters that were just. Uh, what was the little tiny guy's name? Um, Tom Thumb. Oh yeah, Tom Thumb. He's the analog for uh, the Atom. Yeah, <laughs> he was pretty goofy looking and acting, and <laughs> he didn't do it for me. Well, I, I, uh, he was a uh, little person, and so <laughs> I, you've already cast Peter Dinklage in, in as Tom Thumb. I mean, it's just how it's going to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you have enjoyed what you have watched, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you check out our other videos. Thank you. 